Oh, oh, well, hey, good, uh, good Saturday evening. Um, we're doing another check-in. It's been, it's been six days since I started, uh, started talking. Yeah, five days exactly since I made a video, but, um, I figured, you know what, let's do it again, because my voice has been changing a lot, um, this whole week, and it's actually, it's a lot easier to use now. Uh, it, it doesn't, it doesn't crack as much as it, as it was and all that. So, I thought, hey, let's make another video, um, and I'll do... I'll do a little quick, uh, a quick summary of how we got here. So how, how, how do we get here? I wanted to start changing my voice. Started following a, uh, a vocal feminization guide online. You can go back to older videos and see what that was. Um, that worked to me to limited effectiveness because um, I, I really, I have a hard time like purposefully making my voice higher. Um, that, that was, that was my biggest struggle. If I, if I was actively thinking about it, great. And then if I was co conversational and I started at the wrong tone, I couldn't fix it. Um, kind of a, I don't know, brain thing more than anything else. So I decided, okay, I need some help. Uh, I went and saw a, uh, a, a speech therapist and she, she gave me some cool notes on how, how stuff works. We talked a bunch and got some more notes on practices to do. I went back, I had more sessions. This was Laura Habish from UPMC. She's wonderful. Um, a bunch more notes here. These are all in my older videos. Um, and that's kind of, that's where we were after multiple sessions with Laura. I, I, I was running into the exact same problem. I, I can make changes. I can make it sound different, but then I forget. I fall back to the wrong voice. So I went uh, and I got uh, I got a consultation with uh, and this was Laura's suggestion by the way was was hey there are surgeries they're not you know necessarily always effective they don't necessarily work for everybody but it might be worth looking into <clears throat> found Dr Mark Weidenbecker out in uh, the Cuyahoga Falls area of Ohio kind of in the Cleveland Akron area and that's something that he does um, it's one of his specialties and. Uh, I had a consultation and he agreed this was um that I was a good candidate everything everything should work so great let's get that scheduled and we got scheduled and that's what happened 4 weeks ago was well, just shy of 4 weeks ago was uh, was that surgery um and as you can see uh my my default voice um I uh, I if I try and push it lower it's just, I I don't even make sound um so you know that's where things are. I'm pretty happy overall. Um, I, I think it it sounds it sounds really really unexpected inside my own head, and I'm starting to get more and more used to it. Uh, day one, back on Monday, I really felt unsure. Um, I felt like I felt like it sounded I was doing a fake voice, like I was um, like I was doing a cartoon character, but I couldn't not. Um, and I, I you know. I don't know if I'm just getting used to it or if it's resonating a little bit differently because now, you know, my throat's going to continue to heal. My voice box is going to continue to heal over many more weeks. Um, or again, if I'm just getting used to it. Okay, cool. Um, but it's starting to sound better inside my head and uh, the recordings, when I record it and play it back, start to agree a little bit more with what I'm hearing in my head rather than being wildly, wildly different, which they were at the beginning of the week. Um, but so I thought, as I have done in some older videos, um, I thought I might read the Rainbow Passage so that I have um, a point of reference. Again, I can go pull those old ones, stitch them together, maybe with some of these newer ones over the next few weeks. That might be fun. We'll see if I ever actually go to the trouble of doing that. That's a whole separate story. But I know it's impossible if I don't actually ever record it. So so I'm going to tuck in and uh, and read this Rainbow Passage again. And it goes... A little something like this. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act as a prism and form a rainbow. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. These take the shape of a long round arch with its path high above, and its two ends apparently beyond the horizon. There is, according to legend, a boiling pot of gold at one end. People look, but no one ever finds it. When a man looks for something beyond his reach, his friends say he's looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Throughout the centuries, people have explained the rainbow in various ways. Some have accepted it as a miracle without physical explanation. To the Hebrews, it was a token that there would be no more universal floods. The Greeks used to imagine that it was a sign from the gods to foretell war or heavy rain. 
The Norsemen considered the rainbow as a bridge over which the gods passed from Earth to their home in the sky. Others have tried to explain the phenomenon physically. Aristotle thought that the rainbow was caused by reflection of the sun's rays by the rain. Since then, physicists have found that it is not reflection, but refraction by the raindrops, which causes the rainbows. Many complicated ideas about the rainbow have been formed. The difference in the rainbow depends considerably upon the size of the drops, and the width of the colored band increases as the size of the drops increases. The actual primary rainbow observed is said to be the effect of superimposition of a number of bows. If the red of the second bow falls upon the green of the first, the result is to give a bow with an abnormally wide yellow band, since red and green light when mixed form yellow. This is a very common type of bow, one showing mainly red and yellow with little or no green or blue. There you go, that's the Rainbow Passage. Uh, this is a piece of public domain text used in uh, all kinds of voice applications. Um, and that's that's that. So, so I'll probably come back to this and wonder, gosh, why did I sound like that? Um, but who knows? Or maybe this is what I will just sound like forever. Who knows? Uh, it's... Well, it's going to be a mystery until it's not, and that's uh, only going to be determined by the passage of time. So, well, thank you for um, for listening to my ramblings about voice and about how, I don't know, unreasonably or reasonably or whatever hard this was for me um, to figure out how to take care of on my own. But um, but again, I thank you, and, uh, and there we go. So I suppose I should stop recording this video now because I really don't actually have anything else to say.